children, this is Grandma Carla with Mr. Putty, Mr. Putter and Tabby Bake the Cake. And this is a book by Cynthia Ryland, and I really love her little books for children. Mr. Putter and Tabby Bake the Cake. Chapter One, A Good Cake. It was winter time. Mr. Putter and his fine cat, Tabby, sat in their window every night to watch the snow come down. So there they are at their window, all snuggled up against the snow, and they have a nice little fire going in the fireplace while they look out the window. They watched and dreamed. Mr. Putter dreamed of the big sled that he rode as a boy. He dreamed of snowmen big as a house. Tabby dreamed too. She dreamed of the snowdrifts she walked on as a kitten. She dreamed of deep tunnels through white yards. There are their dreams. Mr. Putter's red sled that he had when he was a little boy. Mr. Putter and Tabby were old now. They had a lot to dream about. That is why they loved wintertime. They also loved wintertime because wintertime brought Christmas. There's the picture of him decorating the Christmas tree and looking out the window dreaming. Mr. Putter loved to give Christmas presents. He started thinking about Christmas presents in July. He liked to think of what he could give to the grocer and to the librarian and to the postman. Mr. Putter also had to think of what he could give to his neighbor, Mrs. Teaberry. This was hardest of all. He usually had to think about this all the way to December. He's thinking about all the gifts that he's going to give all of his friends. Mrs. Teaberry liked strange things. She liked coconuts made into monkey heads. She liked salt shakers that walked across the table. She liked little dresses for her teapots. She even liked fruitcake. Mr. Putter could live with monkey heads and walking salt shakers and dressed up teapots. But Mr. Potter could, Putter could not believe that Mrs. Teaberry liked fruitcake. He could not believe that anyone liked fruitcake. Every Christmas, Mrs. Teaberry ate mounds of fruitcake it worried Mr. Putter. This winter, it was worrying him a lot. He thought Mrs. Teaberry should have a good cake for Christmas, not a fruit cake that could break her toe if she dropped it. A good cake, a light and airy cake. There's Mrs. Putter eating tons and tons of fruit cake. Mrs. Teaberry. And one night, as he and Tabby sat dreaming at their snowy window, that is what he decided to give Mrs. Teaberry for Christmas. Mr. Putter would bake her a Christmas cake. It would be a cinch. There he finally figured it out, staring out his window. Chapter 2 no pans. The cake was not a cinch. In the first place, Mr. Putter did not know how to bake a cake. He could bake instant muffins. He could bake instant popovers, but he had never baked a cake. He didn't know how. So there he sits looking. What is he going to do? He doesn't know how to bake a cake. In the second place, Mr. Putter had no pans. He had muffin pans, he had popover pans, but he had no cake pans. 
If he baked a cake, it would have to be in a shoe or maybe a flower pot or even a hat, but not in a cake pan because he did not have one. So he's thinking about what a cake would be like in a flower pot or a hat. And in the third place, Mr. Putter had no cookbook. He had books on seaweed. He had books on clouds. He had books on Chinese trees, but he had no cookbooks. Mr. Putter thought about no cookbooks, no cake pans, and the fact that he did not bake cakes. And he said to Tabby, maybe for Christmas, Mrs. Teaberry would like a nice cup of tea and a card. So he's thinking about a card since he hasn't got what he needs to bake a cake. Chapter 3. Mary Sue. One week before Christmas, Mr. Putter and Tabby took a trip to the sweet shop. It was owned by a woman famous for her cakes. She baked cakes with names like Strawberry, Watermelon, Pumpkin, Apple, Brownie, Surprise. There's the sweet shop. Her name was Mary Sue. And if anyone could teach Mr. Putter to bake a cake, it would be she. Mr. Putter told her his story. He wanted to bake a Christmas cake, he said. Something light, something airy, something that would not break a person's toe. Mary Sue listened carefully. She took good notes. And then she began to sell him things. There she is, listening to his woes and what he needs to learn how to bake a cake. And I'm sure she's quite happy to sell him things. She sold Mr. Putter seven bowls. She sold Mr. Putter three sifters. She sold Mr. Putter ten spoons, five cups, two spatulas, a roll of wax paper, and a Christmas tree pan. Then she sold him an Easy Baker cookbook and sent him out the door. Mr. Putter had spent $100 and he still didn't have any flour. Poor Mr. Putter. All of those things that she sold him and he still doesn't even have cake ingredients. Chapter four, something airy. On Christmas Eve, Mr. Putter had everything he needed. He had flour, sugar, eggs. He had spoons, bowls, sifters. He had a cookbook. He had a pan, and he had a good cat to keep him company. Look at all he has in his very, very full kitchen. Mr. Putter baked all night long. His first cake fell flat. His second cake would not leave the pan. His third cake caught fire. By the time he baked his fourth cake, it was Christmas morning. Mr. Putter's eyes were droopy. His face was saggy. He was moving very slowly. Oh, all of those bad attempts at making a cake. And he couldn't get one to work. But Mr. Putter did not give up. And by 9 o'clock in the morning, he had made the most beautiful Christmas cake in the whole world. It was light. It was airy. It would not break a person's toe. He woke up Tabby, and together... They took the cake to Mrs. Teaberry. Mrs. Teaberry was delighted. She was thrilled. She was patient because as soon as Mr. Putter sat down in her chair, he fell asleep. 
And there she's being patient while he sleeps. He was so tired from making that cake. And she had to wait 12 hours before she could cut her cake. She wouldn't have any without Mr. Putter, and that is how long he slept. But when he finally woke up, Mrs. Teaberry was there with Tabby and her own dog, Zeke. And they ate cake and drank tea and watched the snow fall all night long. They are such good friends. They just like to pal around. There they are, watching the snow fall. And Mr. Putter and Tabby went home with a very nice toaster that sang America the Beautiful when the bread popped up. So there is Mr. Putter's Christmas present from Mrs. Teaberry, a singing toaster. And that is the end of Mr. Putter and Tabby Bake. A cake. Oh, I loved that one, didn't you? And this is Grandma Carla, and I love you.